Okay, hi friends. We are here on week two, part two of How To Tuesday's Acrylic Paint. Um, I have glitter stuck to my canvas. I'm going to play a little bit with the canvas. Boop, boop, boop. And I thought we'd make this a little fun and play, instead of recreating a new image and or face, because yes, we are going to paint a face, um, we would use one of our favorites. I drew this, I want to say, maybe two years ago. It was an image off of Pinterest, and I drew it, and I blew her up a little bit. And why I did that is because I didn't really feel like reinventing the wheel. I really liked this image, and I thought it would be kind of cool to transfer it to my canvas and go from there. So what I did was I printed it, and then I scrubbed it with um, some graphite. I used a pretty hardy, this is a Cron Dosh gra Graph Wood. 6B. It's a pretty nice, rich um, pigment. And then this is old school. I kept it old school. And then I'm just going to flip it over, center it where I want it, and trace out just the lines. I'm not going to, I'll include her head, I'll add that in later, all that kind of stuff, but I just wanted her face features. Because what I'm going to do today is show you guys how to blend, how to, where to place the lights and the darks with your colored paint. Okay, and then we'll also do a little bit of skin tone playing as well. I have a whole so, ah, well, well, I just dropped one. I have a whole selection of paints that was actually black that just fell. And a couple more skin tones, a bunch of different skin tones, a little bit of white acrylic, and some of my trusty paints or paint brushes. I will need a couple smaller ones to go to, but this is a size 10. See, this is interesting to me because at work, where I work, I work in an art studio, size 10s are bigger than this. But this is a Royal Taclon. Not a super fancy brush, but it does the purpose. It serves, you know, does what it's supposed to do. Remember I was saying in the last video that every brand makes a different, they say the same number, but their bristles are different. The length and the size and all that stuff is different. So I could tell you, I usually just go small, medium, large. Um, and then the small ones I would get are for like detail around the eyes and stuff. I don't believe that she's, she's going to look very different. This is in graphite. And um, when I add color, after I trace her out and add color, I will paint her very differently. But in, I will start with the basics of where to lay the lights and the shadows with the acrylic painting. And then, like I said, we'll play with some skin tones as well. And I forgot to mention last week that um, this is a paint palette. Very, very cool. This is one from Canson. It's disposable. It has... It has a sheer side so that the paint doesn't absorb and then it's almost like a tracing. It feels a little bit like, um, not parchment paper, wax paper. It could be actually, I should probably read it. Um, but it has a, sh uh, a shiny side that the paint doesn't absorb and it takes a little bit longer to dry. And then it has a flat side. I'm just thinking, you know, it's kind of cute because it has a little palette. I will just rip it off. Actually, I'll probably just leave it on the palette for sturdiness on the pad itself and then just place my artwork or my paint on there and work from there and do my blending and everything. I could rip it off because I probably will end up doing at least maybe two sheets for blending and stuff. I also use, this is my water container, super exciting. <laughs> um, I also use this because I work on this background piece is paper um, and I, I can't have like a wet paper towel on it obviously but I use, you know, to clean off my brush and dry off my brush I use a paper towel. So I don't take up space on my palette. I have a piece that I use for my acetate, or, or for my, when I do watercolor, this is actually a laminated piece of paper, and I absolutely love it. And I use it to put my paper towel on, and then I put my water, oops, I put my water on top of the other half, so that if I have any drips or anything, it keeps it, protects the paper and the surface and all that kind of stuff. So just a little tippy poo there. And I will, go from there. Uh, next section I will show you guys how to do some shading. How to um, notice the lights and the low lights on the skin. All right. I'm excited. All right. The paints that I have here are, I don't know if I'll end up using all of them, but these are Apple Barrel. <clears throat> I have Apple, Apple Barrel, most of them. And I have Windsor Newton. And I have... Uh, this is Signelier, and it's Flesh Ochre, it's called, it's a skin tone. This one, that was Flesh Ochre. This one is Territorial Beige. I thought that was kind of funny. 
an interesting choice in names. This one is Burnt Umber, one of my favorites. I use this color all the time. And I also love this one, which is Sun-Kissed Peach. That's a fun one. Nutmeg Brown. Burnt Sienna is one of the colors I use a lot when I do my acrylic painting. And then this one is Light Mocha. And this one is Khaki. So I have lots of choices. And then just a basic white gesso that works with anything. This is Liquitex. It's a pretty decent one. Um, this one is Gallery. Galleria. This one is like professional grade. Um, I really am not super... I want you guys just to use whatever you have. You know, go for... They have on Amazon right now, um, and I posted it in my first video in the description box, a whole selection of uh, Apple Barrel paints. There's, you know, two different style, like two different types with a bunch of colors and two different skin tones, and then a whole other section of a bunch of different colors with two different skin tones. And they're not crazy expensive. If you're just learning... I would just consider it playtime and don't put a ton of money or investment into any of this. Just have fun. If you were going to do investing on anything, I would say probably your pencils and or pencils, probably your paint brushes and the surface that you're working on. But then again, again, if you're just playing, I mean, I did a bunch of studying up and I decided to use a canvas for this, but I think next week I'm going to use watercolor paper. Um, they had, let me pull it out. I've seen several things of, this is one of my favorites anyways, I've seen several things of, let me pull this up, this is Fabriano Hot Press Paper, it's size 11 by 14, but I also have 9 by 12. I use this for watercolor, but I've seen a lot of artists use this paper for acrylic too. They just prep it with gesso, a couple coats of gesso before they go ahead and use it. There's another one. Let me see if I can find it. I wasn't going to talk about this, but I changed my mind. Here it is. I haven't even opened it yet. It's Aquare Aquarello Watercolor Paint Artistico. It's Artistico 100% Cotton Hot Pressed from Fabriano also. Um, this one, more than the other hot press, this one they use quite a bit. They gesso it and then they'll use it for acrylic paint. It's good for portability because canvases can get both. Like this is a flat canvas, so it's not too much or too bad. But if you have several of them, it gets heavy. This isn't as bad. You can just take a few sheets and you're good to go. This is also a pad, so or a block, I'm sorry, so that you can work without ripping off a piece of paper. You can do it after when you're done. It should help it from keep it from warping. If you work on a watercolor block, the paper is glued on the sides and when you're done, you just peel it off, as opposed to having to tape it down onto a different surface so that when you put water to it, it doesn't have, like buckle and stuff. So I will probably do that next week, just to play with it, experiment and see if it actually does work. Um, I think that's it. I have, did not have them with me. I needed a yellow ochre and a, a cyan blue color because I'm gonna show you how to use those, just three color, or wait, it's white, by four colors to five colors, five colors, sorry, to make different skin tones. These are kind of obvious, they're in the bottle already, but I'm gonna also show you how to make um, the different values of skin tone from just the five different colors, white, black, cyan, blue, ochre, yellow, and sienna, or burnt sienna. So I think that's kind of cool, actually. So, okay, um, yeah, I thought that was important. I thought you guys would like to know, and we will move forward from there. Okay, so I have, I couldn't wait any longer for those paints for to arrive. So the next video, I will show you how to blend skin tones. In the meantime, I'm going to use, <gasps> well, I'm not going to do that. Well, too late. I already did. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. <laughs> Perfect way to start the filming. All right. In the meantime, I'm going to use Sun Kiss Peach from Apple Barrel, and that's this one, and then Nutmeg Brown, and then Burnt Umber. Those three. It's a light, medium, and dark, and I've said it again and again. Whenever I do anything, we work light, medium, dark. So you want three tones of something in the same value color family so that you can build up your layers of lights, mediums, and darks, okay? Lights, mid-tones, and dark tones. In the meantime, here is my drawing. Let me move these out of the way. And I have traced my image. Remember I told you 
I printed it out, blew it up, put some graphite on the back, and I have traced it out just the lines. And I might change her nose. I have a feeling I'm going to change her nose. Um, but it, that's okay, though, because it's my artwork, and it is my choice. And I, I really want to suggest and ask you guys, I mean, you, of course you can draw a new piece if you want to, but um, why reinvent the wheel when really what we're just trying to learn right now is how to work with acrylic paints and how to blend. That's This, this lesson today is how to blend our skin tones. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've traced it out, and then I'm going to show you guys by marking out sections. This is where my highlights are going to go. These are just in here, okay? This is where my highlights are going to go in those sections. This is where the face protrudes, parts of the face that stick out further than other parts, and will catch the light first. Um, on the chin, on the cheeks, on the bridge of the nose, and the tip of the nose, and on the forehead. Also, here on the eye, the top of the eye, right underneath and beneath the um, eyebrow itself. You know, that bridge sticks out further than the eye itself, so it will catch the light first. Okay? Um, it's also really important that when you guys do this, it'll pop out just a little, when you guys do this, that um, it's like like a watercolor you do need water to move your paints because acrylic paint does dry fairly quickly like I mentioned in the last video I did it has a tendency to dry fast which I love personally because if you don't like something you could just paint over it and start again but um, it's important that you guys wet your brush pat your brush down a little bit on your paper towel it should still be a little bit wet not too wet because you don't want a big sloppy mess and you don't want really ink consistency you want, let's see, maybe more like a thinned out ketchup consistency, just a little bit, not too thin, too thin, because then it'll become uh, too translucent, you'll have to create a lot of layers, and then you have to wait for your stuff to dry, and blah, blah, blah. So, I'm going in with my darks first, the darkest first, which is my Burnt Umber, this one right here. This one right here. So I've wet my brush. I've blotted it off a little. I'm going to, yeah, it's like a little, it's like a, a little thinned out bit of ketchup. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to lay in my darks. Going in. Now what I'm doing is I'm building, this is my layers, my first layer. Come back, pick up a little bit more. This is actually a little dark, or a little thick. My paintbrush is a little too thick for this area. And you might be going, holy cow, what is she doing? It's all good. Acrylic paint is very forgiving. Okay. Then I'm going to come in with my second, and my brush is a little wet. I'm going to come in with my second layer. Now I'm laying my layers, but um, of my lights. Uh, this, I'm sorry. This is my dark and my midtone. But most of this will be covered up with my light tone. But the layers allow for um, the depth. The pre-layers, the pre-gaming pre that I'm doing with the layers here allows for the depth on um, the shadow bits. So yes, I'm laying down color and it's pretty dark. It looks pretty dark. But again, I'm going to go back in with my lights. And yeah, she's going to look very different, just so you know. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm okay with that because I'm working that with a graphite piece. This is an acrylic piece. Trying to keep some like the eye shape and the eyebrows and stuff so I have placement in her lips. But 
these layers are like the undertones. I'm laying down the undertones to the new piece to her skin. And so that those light spots will be what I add the Can you all see this? Whoa, I just looked up at the camera. <laughs> That's a little scary looking. That's crazy. <laughs> it's kind of cool though too. It's very impressionistic. I'm a huge fan of impressionistic work, so I'm all for this. Okay, cleaning off my brush. Oh. And notoriously me, I forgot the ears. Every damn time. Going in with the darker darks. First, I'm going to shadow where that fold is up there. And of course, I'm going to refine. Right now, I'm just focused on the under painting. A little bit. If you've never worked on canvas before, it's pre gessoed. Um, it depends on your taste. Some people pre gesso it again. Because there is a texture to um, canvas, it's got a free, you know first layer of gesso on it. If you want a smoother, you like the idea of canvas, but you want a smoother finish for it, then I would suggest at least one more coat of gesso, if not two. Okay, dry in between, and you can use your heat gun or hair dryer to dry in between. Um, yeah. Um, but this, if you're not, if you don't do either, uh, the, either of the, if you don't do the gesso one or two coats extra and you go just straight into what you purchase at the store, that's fine too. Just know that there is going to be texture. Let me see if I can show you. You will, at the beginning, you'll see the strokes. Now, of course, just like if I had gessoed this a couple times, I did gesso it once, but, um, there's still texture. Um, if the more coats you of acrylic, cause acrylic is plastic and the more coats you have of acrylic paint down, the smoother your surface will start to become and it'll be more solid and you won't see uh, the strokes as much anymore. So it's again, we're building layers. We're building the layers here, people. I'm telling you. Okay, so now I'm going in with my lights. Going in with my lights. I'm going to come back with my mid-tone. I'm going to discuss this with you guys first and then I'll start to, I eventually will speed up when I do, once I get this part laid down. So cool. Guys, I love this. Okay. So. Clean my brush because I want to bring in some more mid tone over here. This brush actually has a tendency to hold a lot of water, which for this purpose I'm not super crazy about. Personally. Come back in here. Picking up my lightest, my lights here now. I do not mind if my if there was some wet over here, like the colors were still wet <coughs> a little bit. Don't mind at all, because it all blends together perfectly. It will all end up be what it's supposed to be. But like I said, I'm also a huge fan of impressionistic work which is basically described as you, you see a lot of the strokes. A lot of the strokes with the pigment that you're using, the paint colors that you're using. I personally like that a lot. When I did um, 
I'm not sure. I'll attach a picture in the video. Um, when I, a while back, I was commissioned last year to do a in the town or city that I live in. They have a community-wide art project that you know where the in Los Angeles it's the Angels, and in Chicago I believe it's the Bulls, and they're all over the United States. These different projects, community projects, and we have one for um, rabbits, big giant. It's called the Cottontails, and we have one for rabbits. And I was asked to do one for the Four Seasons Hotel. I was asked to, I was commissioned to do a rabbit for them. And I did the whole thing in Impressionism because I absolutely love it. It's um, just one aesthetic that I really appreciate. And I'm totally digging. Oh, that was a lot of water. Sorry. Notice that I started to build up some more of the, because I wanted the eyes to look like they're recessed. I'm going to come in and pump up some of the lights here, because right above the brows too, the forehead and the brows, that's also going to catch, oh I didn't do these guys, that's also going to catch um, the light because it sticks out further. Oh my gosh you guys, I'm loving this. Loving, 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 loving. So pretty music. Why is it I keep singing through my songs or my videos? So yeah, I did the whole thing. I did. It was because it was Four Seasons. I themed it the Four Seasons. So I, my hope was that no matter where, because it's a community project and people, this rabbit. I'm back to the rabbit, by the way. <laughs> people um, usually stand and take pictures and stuff with it. And I, my hope was to convey that wherever you stood you got the four seasons as opposed to you know the front being fall the back being winter and blah 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 I made it so the goal was is that no matter what angle you stood by the bunny you too were part of the four seasons it's pretty cool something I've never done before and probably will never do again it was one of the most stressful projects I've ever ever said yes to in my life but I did it so I really don't have to do it again I guess it was an honor for sure. It was, it was a huge honor to be asked to do it. Um, but it was a lesson learned for sure. For sure. Do you see the layers I'm building up you guys? They're just going to keep going and going and going. The lines are starting to smooth out a bit. Let me come down here and add a little bit up here. The magic of acrylic paint is coming to fruition. When I said it's okay, acrylic paint you can't really screw up because if you don't like it, you can just paint over it again. Voila. Case in point. I'm not sure I'm going to give her hair. I really dig her like this, actually. I mean, that could change in five minutes, but right now I'm kind of digging the way she looks. up a little. It's so cool. I'm going to come in with this mid-tone. I want to have some more shadow over here. I probably won't bring in the darkest anymore. Maybe a little bit around the eyes. Because I've already laid that in and I don't want to keep um, building that up as much. Yeah. And you know me, if you've been following my videos, it's not going to stay traditional skin tone. I'm going to add all of my fun little, let me grab them, my fun little flares of color. Because I can't help it. Can't help it. It's part of the magic of being a creative, right? You can do what you want to do. The bottom line is that if you learn all the basics, 
you can pretty much sky's the limit, right? Uh oh. If you learn how to do all the basics, you can go anywhere with them. Truly, it's true. I believe that 100%. Absolutely. Put a little dark in here. I'm going to add a little bit of gesso to my lightest color here to get another because I want it to really be something. And there you go, you guys. It's just about the layers. Take your time. Again, this is a practice. We're practicing, We're being nice to ourselves. Mm-hmm. We all are mean to ourselves. We're our worst critics, aren't we? But if you really, truly are of a person who has the heart to learn, you've got to be patient and kind. If I've learned anything in the last year. I've taken on a lot of new tasks this year, this last year. Uh, the number one hardest thing I've ever done, aside from raising two children, is... Um, well, and they were like the easiest kids to raise, but still there's a lot involved, <laughs> um, is editing, learning how to edit and then having it do what it says it's going to do. Mm -hmm. I have had many hours and self discussions of trying to figure this out. Finally, I, I understand it. But now I deal with the equipment doing what it wants to do as opposed to what it's supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but it's patience. I've had to learn it, so I did. And then, and now I'm here. Now I'm here and now I'm able to make these videos for you guys. And share what I know and my stories and um, build my community bigger. And use this platform to hopefully... Honestly, bottom line is to hopefully change lives. I'm hoping that with this platform, I can, because I've been a teacher my whole life, my whole life, even as a kid, I've always been this role. I don't know what it is. It's just, I think maybe, I think I've talked about this before. Maybe it's a cancer thing. I'm not sure. But um, in some form, I've been a teacher. So when I discovered and really thought about it and realized that this is an amazing platform where I can reach millions if I choose to people and if anything changed their lives just a little bit make things a little bit easier you know you hear the same thing a million times and then one that one person and it clicks for you if I can be that one person I just think it's cool that you can come here onto YouTube and do great things learn so much and become part of an incredible community so it's pretty amazing pretty amazing and I'm honored to be part of it I recognize the value that this has in people's lives I know it's been a huge thing for me in my life in a way I'm giving back kind of always been that way though because I am a teacher at heart so I've always had no problem telling people what to do <laughs> no, I'm just kidding <laughs> but not really Okay, guys, so I'm going to keep going. I'm going to add some of the gesso, the white, because I want to start building up these lights, the same spots that I put the highlights in before. I want to make them a little bit lighter, and we're going to go from there. Okay, happy painting. I'm going to speed up now. I'll pop in again if I have more info to share. on a sunny day in late July, and everything turned upside down. I almost lost track of time as weeks went by I couldn't get him off my mind I told him I want that great love Like standing in the middle of a bonfire You don't know how you got there but you hold tight Knowing that you can't get burned Just tell me how we lost track of everything but each other I honestly don't know And tell me how we messed up Drifting away from each other Didn't want to let you go Carry on on your own Ever since I got a good look in his 
eyes, I just knew that he was special He said he wanted to take it slow, but I couldn't help that I wanted to take it to the next level Cause I wanted that great love, like standing in the middle of a bonfire You don't know how you got there, but you hold tight Knowing that you can't get burned Just tell me how we lost track of everything but each other I Everything turned upside down I almost lost track of time as weeks went by I couldn't get him off my mind I couldn't get him off my mind Okay, so remember you guys when I talked about, I've talked about this before, the white of the eyes are not just white. Nope. They're grays and blues and pinks and I talked about it a lot in my How To Tuesday video for colored pencil when I did my eyeball um, in colored pencil. There's all kinds of colors in there. So I'm going in with some grays. Um, I'm going to go in with a little bit of, yeah, maybe some pink. This is Valentine Pink. I'm going to mix it up with the gray that I have on my palette. Don't be scared. It's just paint. It's just paint. And it's taken me a while to build up these colors. I'm going to go back in with a darker gray. If you want them to have some depth and dimension, go back in. What color? Let's do green eye. Okay, I guess that's where it's gonna go. Oh. Uh -oh. That's a bright green, huh? It won't be this way for long. Let me turn it this way. Her eyes are much more narrow than I'm used to. I usually like big, bold eyes. But I also really like her eyes in this piece. So we're going with it. We are doing it. Grab some mistletoe. Use some mistletoe green. Like we did for when I painted the cactus. Put a little red down. Mm -mm. Little bit goes a long way, especially on this palette. These um this 
paper palette. Okay, I just wanted to pop in and give you a little 411.